Well, greetings, it's Don here. And um, if you've been following along with me on YouTube here, you know that I've been working on a Jeep restoration project. Mixed in with that, I've been rebuilding a old 1969 Santana 22 sailboat. But way back three years ago, I was on a hunt for a trawler up in the Pacific Northwest. And um, if you followed along with that, I was kind of zeroed in on a 40 foot Davis trawler. And we went up there, put an offer on it, hauled it out of the water, did a survey and found some issues and didn't wind up buying that boat. Now that, I look back, was three years ago. A lot of stuff's happened since then. Obviously, we've been through the pandemic and all that kind of thing. But all through that period of time, I have really never stopped looking for a boat. So, um, got through the pandemic for the most part, managed to kind of survive that without getting COVID. Never have had it, I don't think. Um, I'll probably get it tomorrow now since I said that. <laughs> but what um, what I did do is it's we're in 2023 now and late 2022, right around Christmas time, I was looking on boats.com because I do that constantly. And um, I'd go periods of time where I wouldn't be looking and I'd look and I wouldn't look and I'd look. Well, I got on there one day and been a while and there was four boats that were all good potential candidates. And so I emailed my broker and I said, hey, what do you think of these? And crickets. I couldn't get a hold of him. So um, I panicked a little bit and I started trying to, trying to hunt him down. Turns out he had had COVID and his wife had had COVID. And so he had been laid up. When I finally got a hold of him, two of the boats that we were looking at were already sold. So um, that left us just two to look at. One had these Cummins triple nickels, they call them, 555s engines in them. And there was a problem with that boat when he went and looked at it. He came back to me and said, even if this boat was free, you don't want it. It's, it's been, had two sales attempts already fall through. There's some problems with that boat. Let's don't mess with it. But there was this Ponderosa 42 up in the Seattle area that looked pretty good. So I didn't have time to go up there. I sent uh, my broker, Michael, over there to look at it. And he came back and said, yeah, it looks really good. I'd put an offer in. So we did. And the seller countered. And I was all good to go with their counter price. And then, boom, suddenly everything went bad. Um, and I won't go into the details, but I went for a month thinking that boat was not going to happen. So finally I reached out and the boat was still listed and I was getting, you know, like what's going on here? I finally got my broker to get with their broker and we worked some things out and turns out that we were, they accepted my offer or my counter. I accepted their counter, I guess. And next thing you know, we're scheduling a trip up to the Pacific Northwest to go look at this boat. So I'll cut a little of that in right now, and we'll go do the first pass through this thing and an in-water survey. All right, well, I've got some time, so I thought I'd do a little reconnaissance of the surroundings here, since this is going to wind up probably being my home away from home for a while. So I am all the way to the north end here of this complex where the marina is. And there's a park here. So I'm walking around the park and we'll go down and check out the water. All right, well, I'm trying to keep the lens out of the rain, but I'm out here on the beach and uh, Alaska is that way. And uh, the marina is that way, all the way down there, the other end of this area that I'm at. Got train tracks going around the corner, right over there. And a uh, huge park behind me here. Lots of dogs out walking around, so that'll be good. I was a little worried about the dog situation. Okay, well, here we are on the up on the flybridge of the Ponderosa. So, we've got the dash here. That's the touch screen, uh, multi-function display up there engine controls, bow thruster, radio, um, 
depth finder, I think that was, over there. So anyway, um, let's take a quick spin around here. Lots of storage under the both these benches. Plenty of room of storage. And um, that's the ditch bag over there. That stays with everything we see, I think, basically, for the most part, was with the boat. So there is a spot up here on the back of the sun deck where a, a dinghy could sit. It's not currently used for that. The dinghy is attached to the back back here. So now we're coming down into the bar area. Um, this ice maker does not work, but that's the only thing so far we've found that doesn't work. Um, sink and the entertainment area there. And then you go out these doors down the side decks. Um, it's raining quite hard. It seems to always be raining when I'm looking at boats, but then this area here is kind of set up to make it easy for us to reach out and hook a line on the back cleat back here. So that snaps up and then can kind of close back down. I think I'll just close that for now. Okay, so back stateroom. Let's turn on the light. Shower. So drawers and cabinets everywhere. Um, so this is the back cabin. There's a washer and dryer in there. The washer part doesn't work, but you can't use it here anyway in the marina. But the dryer does work, and they said they dry stuff a lot. But, and then looks like a pocket door. Okay, so we're all the way forward now. Those stay. Cruising the Gulf Islands I have already, but um, looks like a bunch of other good stuff there. Um, storage. Drawers, and bed, and the bed. This one's got memory foam mattress on it. Speakers, storage. Okay, my um, walkthrough might be a little choppy here because um, the owners and the surveyor and my broker, none of those uh, really wanted to be on YouTube. So uh, I've kind of chopped everyone out. And um, But I had a good look around the thing and um, I think I'm gonna settle in nicely. So I'll do a better job of kind of carefully walking through um, when we get up there on the weekend. All right, so there we go. We got up there, we got the survey done. Um, I'm back in Salt Lake now. I have the survey in my hands. And um, I'll just read you what the surveyor wrote as his kind of uh, ending paragraph summarizing the boat. He said, this vessel has been well maintained by her owners and is considered to be in excellent condition. He bolded and quoted excellent, so that's good, I guess. Um, Interior finish is professionally done antique. Electronics inventory is complete, serviceable, and duplicate, meaning there's like a backup radio and a backup 
depth finder and so forth. The main machinery has 75% of its usable, usable life remaining before overhaul per manufacturer's recommendations. So, yay, good, a good survey result, really good survey result as a matter of fact. In fact, as the surveyor was looking at several of the systems, one of the things he pulled underneath the helm, there's the cabinet that you open up that get to all the wiring. And he said, now that's what I like to see. Everything's straight and clean and labeled and like, good, good. That's good to hear. So we're doing this. So where we're at right now is I'm a couple of days from my next trip to Seattle, but I have wired the money off and signed all my side of the paperwork. Uh, I've got the insurance lined up. I've got the sublease paperwork done to sublease the slip at Chill Shoal Marina from the owner. I can stay there for a year and then I got to figure out what to do. So they said there's a two year waiting list on that Marina. I hope that's not the case. But what I'm also hoping is I'm going to get my name on the list because I'm assuming they're, you know, they're going to need me on the list. But then I'm hoping when the year is up, when they understand that, hey, I'm the one who would be freeing up a slip if I leave. Can I just keep renting the slip I'm in? Hopefully that'll work. We'll see. <laughs> I'll have to make some big friends at the uh, Marina office to make sure we can pull that off. If not, after a year, I got to figure out where we're going. But at least I got a year to worry about that. So this coming weekend, um, Sam and Dylan and I are getting on a plane on a Friday night and we're flying up to Seattle just for this first weekend um, to you know, get the keys and all that stuff and get on the boat for the first time and kind of figure out what we got here in terms of, you know, do we want to change out any of the furniture? I, I kind of do on the back deck thing. I think I'll probably get some different furniture out there and, and Sam's does interior design. So hopefully she'll kind of help me figure out what needs to stay and go. And um, then my plan is after that, you know, we'll fly up and fly back after just that first weekend, but then I should be able to kind of have my plan of what I need to take with me. And my initial plan at this point is to try to spend two weeks on the boat, two weeks back here in Salt Lake, so I can actually be in the office for two weeks and then work remote for two weeks. So I got to figure out my internet connectivity up there and all that kind of thing. But that's the plan at this point. And then we'll start to turn that two weeks into three weeks eventually maybe and get to the point where I could even go away for potentially a month and maybe be gone from the business or just checking in occasionally and have everything still going well. But I figure I've got to wean my folks to get them to that point um, before we can say, okay, I'm heading up the inside passage now. I'll be out of touch for a week while, or two while we make our way to a catch can or whatever. So anyway, um, I'm dang excited. Um, this is really, I think maybe the universe was looking out for me and was like, Hey, there's a better boat in your future. If you just sit tight, don't take that Davis that maybe has some mechanical issues with the motors because there's something waiting for you. I don't know. I'm not really a big believer in fate or destiny or any of that, but maybe in this case, somebody was looking out for me. So I'll bring you along. For all of this, I've got a ton of learning to do. I've never had to really deal with tides and currents and I, I, wind. Yeah, I deal with wind. I mean, having a sailboat, I, I know how to watch the wind and understand what wind means. But um, I got, you know, a bigger boat. I mean, this is like a basically, again, another 10 foot jump, which is about what I've done every time. I started with a 24 and I went to a 32 and now I'm going to a 42. So I roughly was bumping up 10 feet each time. And you know, the first time out is scary, but after a bit you figure it out and you're fine. The boat does have a bow thruster, it does not have a stern thruster. And I, but I did look and there's a company that makes one that you kind of bolt to the swim platform. So you kind of can retrofit a stern thruster on without, you know, digging a big old hole in the, in the stern of the boat. I'll, I may look into that because I may spend a fair amount of time on this thing, either single-handed or just, you know, maybe me and Gray or something. And I, I think I'd be a little bit more comfortable if I've got the thrusters fore and aft so I can kind of walk the boat straight sideways if I need to. I do know how to use the engines against each other to spin around and all that kind of thing. But there's a lot of windage on this boat, big freeboards. And so it's, you know, if we're on a windy day, uh, 
guessing it's probably going to be a little bit of a handful to, to manage. But um, yeah, electronics, AIS, all that stuff, I've got to kind of get myself familiar with all of that. So let's just tear into it and go have some fun with this thing. The next time you see me, I think we'll be up there doing that first inventory of the boat. <laughs>